I've been looking through more of my um, optical illusions, the ones which are, have what they call a missing area paradox or something which disappears just by shuffling them around. And there's a lot of repetition here, which I don't want to show, but there's a few outstanding ones where some real creative energy has gone into it. And here's an early one or something that's now had many, many um, people copying it. I think this is Mel Stover's work from the very early days when he first thought of the idea of having two se two sets of things with eight, with more numbers or less numbers when you change the pieces around. He's got glasses of beer there and he's got a whole variety of professions of people, all of whom like drinking beer. But hang on a sec, we've got a problem here because we've got six people, one, two, three, four, five, six people and only four glasses of beer. How to solve it? There's going to be a fight, there's going to be warfare, there's going to be the spilling, spilling of blood and beer, I think. Well, of course, the answer is just change the pieces round and then order is restored. Line them up nicely. We've now got five men and five glasses of beer and everyone's happy. And small children, when looking at it, will say, which man turned into a glass of beer? Or when you go the other way, which glass of beer turned into a man? Well, it's um, it's a playing on the geometry, isn't it? Missing area. I think Martin Gardner called it redistributed area paradox. Those glasses have all got a big six uh, large, smallish one and five large ones. That's a nice one. That's, so I'm very pleased to have got hold of that. There's another very nice one, which is very recent indeed, because it's um it came out of the gathering for Gardner, and it's... Um, referred to a very old one that Martin Gardner produced many years ago. Let's put that over there a minute. It was pictures here of little men, if I can get that in focus, yes. And when you shuffle the pieces round, you get an extra face and this person disappears. And it's just by moving them, it's too simple to show. What was very nice was some Americans thought of the idea of giving them names. So we've got Joe and Roy and all down to Len at the end. When you shuffle them around, it's very obvious what's happening because Joe has become Joey, a longer name. And at the far end, Len's become Alen. So he's a bigger name. So just by shuffling the names, you either got six short names or five longer names. And it's, it's what's happening here as well. You've got longer faces or shorter faces. A very nice way of demonstrating what's actually happening with the vanishing area. And I don't think that's ever been printed in a book, but it came out of um, a Gathering for Garden a few years ago. And I was very grateful to Stuart Tomoskiewicz, um for for uh, for putting in amongst his uh, exchanges, which is something I've never seen that, that juxtaposition of names and things. So well done him. There was one moment in history about 20 years ago when this became quite serious, actually. This is a very, a very interesting idea. It occurs in many books now. But magicians took the idea of taking, for instance, some, um, well, a $10, $1 bill. They probably use stage money, actually. They're making cuts and cuts and cuts at different places, all the Pacific places, about 15 of them. And when you reassembled them, you found that you had an extra note appeared. And this is what they demonstrate here. You've got some... Um, those notes there and when you shuffle them and cut them it produces an extra bill well someone pointed this out um, when it was still being branded about uh, amongst magicians this is something that might be taken more seriously and sure enough the united states treasury in due course had a good look at this this is about 20 30 years ago and decided yes they needed to do something with the design of the bill to stop it being compromised in this way I don't think anyone ever tried to do it, you know, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a fraud, but it was just um, an incident, incident, really, in which something which is recreational mathematics was uh, taken interest in by the heads of states. Very interesting. And there's one more here, which Frank Potts produced. This is a lovely man who I've had a lot of time for. He's not only designed many things, but also been a very good organiser, too. And he just tossed this off as a simple one. Something I felt I could almost do. This is not faces or anything, it's just the word thief, T H I E F. Change the pieces round, and what do you get? Hard to see. But, oh, look, someone's a thief's been, isn't it? They've taken away the rest of the eye. What's happened to it? But well, of course, it's redistributed. So we've got some um, letter robbers here at work. <laughs> That's a very nice idea and a nice take on the missing area paradox, I think, from. Um, a guy who really know, knows his stuff. And I think that's, that's it's, again, never been published in books, but I think it's a very sweet little one, which I felt I almost have made that myself if I thought about it. Have a go yourselves and taking that idea and see if you can come up with something yourself, because it's something that, of that genre you can copy. It's uh, brilliant. Do you like it?